Okay, no idea how this happened because this here is Topps Heritage 2023. That's not supposed to come out until a week from today. Uh, it's supposed to be today is the 24th of May. The release date for this series was uh, to be the 31st. And I did pre-order from Dave and Adams a couple of boxes. I paid a little extra um, because these generally are more expensive when they first are released for suckers like myself. But these are two hoppy boxes of the 2023 Heritage, um, which doesn't have a release date until May 31st. So uh, let's do a little sneak preview here. I'm going to open these on separate videos. This is going to be box number one here. Uh, did not expect this. I had a separate order that I had made with the good folks over at Dave and Adams. And I thought that was what was being delivered. And I opened the box and I looked and I said, wait, this isn't this. Uh, I had ordered some 2015 Heritage boxes. And I glanced at it and I was like, what is this? This doesn't look right. And I just sort of like, I almost, I, I just set aside the, re the boxes and, and was digging around looking for the receipt. And then I picked the box back up and I noticed, oh, wait a second. This is my pre-order of the 2023s. So this is my first one of these. Uh, I would, I don't know if Dave and Adams maybe placed the order directly with Tops and Tops shipped straight to me. Uh, but yeah, wow, neato, neato, neato. All right, so Tops 2023 baseball hobby box does have a box loader. Looks like it's one of the ones that they call a deckled edge. Oh, sweet. And it's Byron Buxton. I'm a Twins fan. So that is really, really cool. The deckled edge are the, uh, you know, kind of scalloped edges that they do there. Um, so, yeah, Byron Buxton. I'm, I'm excited about that. If for nothing else, I just, he's he's awesome. He's, he's on my list of uh, guys I really like. So... Let me find a safe zone for this to be placed for the time being, and then we'll get down to the packs. Okay. All right, so these look like, uh, I've been around long enough. Oh, it looks like the uh, 89 Fleer. Huh. Okay, maybe not. Uh, yeah, it does kind of actually look a little bit like old Fleer packs, though. Uh, it, I don't know why. This is the first one I'm seeing. You're You're seeing it as I'm seeing it. Nine cards, box of 24. Uh, these packs seem a little, usually they're all nice and tightly organized and packed in there. This one seems a little disorganized, but ooh, opening up my first one here. And let's see what we get. Okay, these are nice looking cards. Uh, I've been around this world long enough to know... Uh, remember this design from back when it was new turn this a little bit so i can get a better look at these things yeah i well i don't remember actually when these cards were new this design is from 1974 there's a vlad jr that's nice huh is that a oh sorry that's not a vlad jr it's a guriel jr my bad. But no, I don't remember the 74 cards myself, but they were around when I started collecting in the 80s. Um, so I did see some of these back then. I'm not sure who in this base set... Oh, I like that back also. I'm not sure who in this base set is going to be the big rookies, uh, because I'm pretty sure we already have a Witt Jr., uh, a, um, Hort, uh, a Gonzalez, um, Julio Gonzalez is already out from the 22 set as well. Not that I would complain about getting either of those guys, but, uh, actually right now we're just, uh, looking at, um, 
you know, new new guys hitting the field that that maybe are in this set that really haven't even started to make their name yet. So, you know, I'm looking at guys like, uh, uh, how do you pronounce that? D.L. Hall. Um, you know, he's a rookie right there uh, for the O's, the Orioles. Here's another one. Looks like Yanier Diaz for the Astros. I've heard of him. So, okay, neat, neat looking set. Let's go ahead and I'll set that there. Um, these still contain your chromes, autographs, relics of various types, of course. So I am pretty much, as of late, I, I really just have been sticking with the Heritage sets. Those are the ones that I like the most. Um, these are designs that I grew up seeing and not being able to afford because this 74 set actually had some really high quality players in it uh, in... You know, just my initial reaction on pack number two here is there's something about the cards. I don't know if it's the font. I, I'm not sure what it is. There's there's something that just feels a little weird. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying I don't like them. Uh, but I do think it feels like maybe... Maybe it's the gloss of this front side that's bothering me. Um, I, I maybe expected it to be glossier, um, to have more of a shine to it. This uh, box does have short printed cards. This entire set has the 400s, our SPs, short prints, and really, really hard to get. If they have stuck with their past way of doing this, uh, then it's one out of every three packs has a 400 series card in them. So, uh, yeah, it's the 400s are usually some of the toughest ones. I can get the entire rest of the set completed, and then I find that I, I am spending all of my time and money just getting those short printed 400 series cards. Uh, there's a nice Aaron Judge card, number four. Highlight card from last year. Another rookie. I'm noticing lots and lots of rookies. So it seems to be this set may actually have a fair amount of uh, rookies, but a lot of them are, you know, we're only in May of this year. It's an interesting looking one. We're only in May of 2023 right now. So uh, some of the guys who are actually going to be the biggest players may not actually be standing out quite yet. Tatis Jr. there. I usually flip them over and look for any of the indicators usually around the name. I'm sorry, around the number on the card. It will sometimes have an indication I'm guessing in this set it'll be beneath the number, but in some cases they put it around the side of the number to indicate that it is a image variation or a color swap or something to that effect. I am just, this is a amazing little surprise. I'm going to go ahead, I think, and just post this video just straight up raw. Um, a lot of times I have a YouTube channel and uh, I will edit my videos, but since this is a box break um, on a box that probably not a lot of people have seen uh, thus far, uh, this might end up just getting some views um, from folks just based on the rarity of what I'm doing here. So probably I should maybe just shut my mouth. Hey, there's a 414. Who is 414 there? Is he anybody of note? He's with the A's, so not a great sign. No offense, Oakland fans, but uh, your team is not very good this year. Um, I guess that's why they're moving to Las Vegas. 
Las Vegas A's. Stay tuned. Coming to a casino near you soon. Um, looks like we got something in here. It looks like a relic, possibly. Uh, not my favorite things. Jonathan and India, always a nice card. Uh, another rookie. Uh, we got an all-star card there. Uh, oh, and we have, yeah, a little clubhouse collection uh, of Sal uh, Salvador Perez. Huh. Isn't Salvador Perez a player from the past? Is this a past piece of uniform doesn't look old uh yeah so there's a there's my relic i guess from this box not fantastic hopefully i'll pull something else uh i think that autos and relics are one per box so more than likely that is that is it for me there um a salvador perez jersey but maybe I'll get a good chrome out of here. And at the very least, I'm going to have the makings of the beginning of a new set here. Yastrzemski. Yeah, I can definitely see myself as a new age performers, which they always like putting in. I'm not. Okay, haven't seen that. Style, uh, Henshion Ru, Nick Calastanos. Flip through and just see if we get any of the image variations or color swaps. Not sure what the, the policy or frequency of those image variations is. I don't think that the image variations count towards your one goodie per box, like the, uh, like the, the uniform um, clubhouse collection or the signatures uh, do. I think the autos in the clubhouse collection are one per box, but I think that you can get image variations that go outside of that. And Max Scherzer on his side there. I like those horizontal ones. I do think I like the back. It's just something about the colors on the back on these uh, that really looks very nice. I really like the, the color scheme. I believe that also probably the if they also follow their their past way of doing things uh the most rare variations tend to be the flip stock where they print it uh in on a reverse um let's see mark or mark yeah okay one thing I will also say about my my findings with when you go with uh, is that a team card? That is that's oh no, it's the Yadi Diaz. Okay. Uh, one thing I do find though is that when you go with a hobby box, the cards tend to be very well centered. Um, they tend to be very high quality on the cut of the card and. Uh, of course, I say that, and here's a 400 set series card that I've noticed this before. I, I don't know why, but sometimes in other sets in the past, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but the stock on this, a, a short printed card, is much darker than the stock on a standard one of the cards. I don't know why that is. Um, I really like when I get, uh, and that's AJ Pollock, um, I like when I get the short printed cards, the 400 series that are rookies as well. Uh, that gets pretty exciting. It's like you never know because they could end up being a short printed rookie card, which makes it even more rare. And then you could end up uh, getting even more value out of it. They tend to stick those 
really high quality. I think O'Neill Perez in the 2020 high numbers possibly said was a short printed one uh, and helped boost his uh, values. It's one of the things I do like about the Heritage is that they add in all of those fun little variations um, and things like the short prints uh, to make it, it a little bit more interesting and increase the scarcity of the cards and uh, and they actually do remind me a little bit of things like the short prints from uh, when, you know, the 70s and 80s and 60s when they actually would have shorter prints of the higher numbers. I think that was because they would start the season and they would be printing like cards, you know, one through 300 at the first of the season. And then about mid-season, they would be printing cards, you know, 1 through 600. And then 1 through 700 would be the final uh, run of cards. And so you'd end up with a whole lot of the 1 through 300s because they'd continue printing those. Uh, and as the season went on, they would print fewer and fewer packs. And you'd end up with just a very low number of those uh, highest number cards. Looks like a next card here could be something. Okay, yeah, it's a reversed card. It's usually a way to uh, see something stick out. It's a Cunha Jr. I'm looking here because uh, I want to see if there is anything that indicates that it is a variation. Um, what is this? With it being a reversed card, I want to say that it's it's got to have something on it. Since it's a flipped over card, it's card 183. I'm not seeing, let me, let me pull out my magnifier here and see if I'm missing something on this. Card 183, Ronald Acuna Jr. The card was reversed from the rest of the pack, so I, I have to assume that there is something about this that is different. It's not a flip stock, possibly an image variation, but usually they put the variations, uh, color variations and stuff. That's, I'm not sure what's up with that. I am going to uh, treat that card with some tender love and care until I figure out why it was in the pack upside down. You saw it. All right, Mr. Acuna Jr., uh, not sure why your card was reversed there. Uh, we get any more 400s here. I'm going to set this Acuna aside in a special spot there. That was weird. Um, I'm going to have to take a closer look at it. If it turned out to be something big, I'll post it under the video here. Um, you can just look underneath the video on YouTube here and uh, you'll see the details of any explanation that I have coming up back with that. We've got Jordan Duran, my closer for the Twins, who is not doing great. Got a Cal Raleigh, that's cool. He's doing well, shaping up to be a good looking player. I do have to say, uh, I like the pictures, uh, the, the photographs on these cards. They're pretty nice looking. It's a Gaylord Perry and Justin Verlander, then a now card. Uh, I like the photos on these. You know, uh, because there's a nice mix of, of portraits as well as action shots. In fact, I see a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of action shots. Uh, so that's that's actually a nice, um, nice style that I like there. Uh, there's that then and now. Not a huge fan of the then and now. It does count as an insert. Um, so it's not part of the, the standard set, I'm guessing. For me, when I actually collect these heritage sets, there are so many variations and inserts. And then chromes. And then the variations of the chromes. When I collect the set, I collect card 1 through 725, and that's it. And I don't go for any of the variations. 
I uh, go ahead and just go for the actual real set 1 through 725. Any variations I pull out and set aside, image variations and stuff like that. Unless it's one, you know, there have been cases where there I've gotten things like a short printed uh, Christian Yelich or something like that where it was his rookie card and to get the standard version of that was just way too expensive so I did just use like the variation um, card to finish out my set now I'm not going to sell that with a, a variation I, if, if I were to ever sell a set which I don't generally I take these and I Put together the set i box it up and and it goes on the shelf and uh but the thing is i end up buying so many boxes that i have enough to make multiple sets oftentimes and i would consider selling set two or set three uh out of all of the ones that i end up getting there's luis robert he's just a portrait but it wouldn't surprise me if uh with his popularity these days if they come out with an image variation on him, which uh, has an action image. Uh, Liam Hendricks, that's a good card as well. What is this, a White Sox pack here? Flashback card. Josh Bell. All right, got a couple decent cards out of that one. These uh, boxes that I purchased early on, that I advance purchased, um, I have to say are probably not boxes I'm going to make any money off of them because uh, it's a Carlos Santana. Okay. Uh, because you end up paying a premium to buy the boxes in, in advance purchase uh, or, you know, to, to pre order them. These, this set, if it follows how a lot of these heritages have gone, uh, will start off as a like a hundred dollar box, um, buying it wholesale. Hey, there's a Wit Jr. and he got his little gold cup, the uh, the rookie. What do they phrase that as? That is the uh, tops all star rookie. Um, got his little gold all star rookie. Uh, Witt Jr. did have cards in the high number set, so this technically probably doesn't count as his rookie, but that's fine. That's a great card to get. Um, so there. But yeah, the way that these sets have gone in their hobby boxes, they start off at, say, $100, and if it's a very... Uh, uh, rich set as far as the number of rookies, which is, is looking like it. It has just tons and tons of uh, RC labels on these cards. Um, if it turns out that there's a lot of valuable rookies, the box set will go up to much higher. It'll it'll end up going up to uh, you know 150, 200, whatever the case may be. Um, but if it turns out to be like a 2022 heritage uh or let's say like the 2020 that was a weird year because it was a short season because of the pandemic uh but if it turns out to be like a 2020 high numbers those boxes can drop in price a lot they'll start off as hundred dollar boxes and they can end up you know i think right now you can buy those boxes for about seventy dollars a box there's a yellich Taylor Ward, not seeing anything big, although I still have yet to see a chrome come out of here, and I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be getting one, if not more, chromes out of this box. Still scratching my head on that Ronald Acuna Jr. that the, the card was inverted inside the pack. It was the stock, the other stock side was down, which usually indicates something like a special card. It indicates that maybe it's a variation card or an autograph card. Usually that is some indication, but I didn't just off, you know, offhand see that. Got Mr. Judge there, always a quality card. Uh, guy just is, is just crushing the ball again this year. 
But again, I haven't seen anything in this pack that, or in this box that, that makes me say, oh yeah, that, that's definitely worth the hundred bucks that I spent on it. Polanco. Certainly that could change. I still have about a third of the box to go through. Not seeing a huge number of 400s. Generally, those short printed 400 cards, you end up only getting uh, one in every three packs. So in a box like this where it's 24 packs, I'm only going to end up getting eight of them. Once in a while, you'll pull a ninth one as well. But uh, for the most part, they have probably have a computerized AI system that is making certain that the wrong number of cards don't go into a box. There's a Kepler. I notice my twins when I see them. I would say a good twins one this year would be who is it? Uh, Sonny Gray. I think he is having a Cy Young style season. As I said, we're only in May. Come back and talk to me in October and we'll see if it continues. But he is having a pretty spectacular season. Something about this pack feels funny. Um, this pack just felt like it was a little different than the rest of them, but that may not be the case. Cal Mitchell, another rookie, Diaz, Riley, another nice thing about getting these uh, packs is that they still smell like they were just printed, Guriel, I think he may end up being a decent player, he's, he's He's doing great, uh, Gabriel. Uh, he's doing well this year early on um, for Arizona. Arizona's starting off well this year, but uh, we'll see if they maintain it. Uh, I'm feeling that with my twins. They started off fantastic. Uh, they are in a weak division this year, though. Uh, competing against... Uh, the White Sox, the Indians, and the always impressive Detroit Tigers. Huh. These packs are packed in there a little bit odd. Maybe they're still fine-tuning their box packing machine this year. It feels like one of these corners was a little bit squished up, and the box that they came in was in pristine condition. So, there's another Byron Buxton. Didn't I have one of him a little... Oh, that was the box topper was my Byron Buxton. Uh, yeah, the photos on these cards, oh, that's okay. I'm noticing now that uh, for the past few years, they have had a... Uh, a signature on the fronts of a lot of these cards and I'm just not seeing those on this set so I guess they didn't go with the uh, autograph um, on the front of each card although they do have an autograph on the back in a little box here uh, that you can see oh, it's card number one who was card one? Oh, it's Aaron Judge okay card num numero uno is Aaron Judge the AL what is this? AL home run. Uh, oh, he's he's a triple crown winner. Was that the case last year? Did Judge win the triple crown? Because it does have new home run king. Oh, okay. So he's the AL home run king now. So that's card one out of the set. Nice looking card. I sometimes wonder if card one is short printed uh, and they just don't tell us. in the middle of my work day right now, taking a break to do this, but I do hear my computer binging at me over there. So, Bryce, that's a good card, playing for the Phillies, probably always get booed when he goes back to Washington since he left Washington to go to Philadelphia. 
Um, he got Washington a World Series ring, though, so I don't think they have a whole lot to complain about. I am a little surprised or curious. I, I don't think I've seen a Julio Gonzalez in here. And he is a spokesperson for Tops now. I've seen his commercials on TV, so I would think that he's in this set. He actually is in a commercial that's like a like one of these cooking shows uh, where he is cooking up a pack of Tops Series 1 for 2023. Um, there's that Sonny Gray I was talking about. Like I said, he may have a career year this year. He may have a Cy Young year this year. I think he has yet to give up a homer, and we're two months into the season. Uh, oh, and there... Oh, okay. Well, I speak and you shall receive. There's our Seattle Julio Rodriguez. Uh, he did get his All-Star Rookie Cup thing here. Um, he's card 18. Good to see that Julio's got a nice looking card there. Let's ruffle through the backs of these. That was a nice pack. The Julio is probably going to be worth something. Uh, Obviously, um, everything's worth something, but uh, the Julio is probably worth, you know, early on here, uh, his card is going to be in high demand, so I'll want to make sure I get that into a sleeve in a moment here. Still have yet to see a chrome, although this pack feels thick, so maybe maybe we're getting our chrome right here. Uh, I never trust, yep, it is in there. Uh, I never trust a open box in a store, by the way, because exactly what I just did. I picked this one up and I said, yep, that pack feels thick. And so I did get the chrome in here. Uh, an open box in the store. Chances are somebody with the same touch that I have has gone through that box and picked out the chromes and uh, pulled those open. All right, so my chrome is a rookie. It's Brett Batty. No relation to Roy Batty from uh, from the, uh, 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 what am I thinking of? Um, Blade Runner fame, Roy Batty. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, so it's a, a white chrome. Um, it's card number 675 of 999, so it's not one of the particularly rare chromes. But it is interesting that I, I could feel that uh, just by picking up the bo uh, the pack. I could feel that I was about to get that. So there's my Chrome. It's a rookie. He could end up being good. Uh, rookie third baseman for the Mets. He has been doing day-to-day -day play from what I've seen. Uh, could end up joining the ranks of some other great third basemen who have played for the Mets. When you play in any New York team, you get a little leg up too. So... Probably not a terrible card to get. Kyle Schwarber, Kemp. Cannot say that I am going to write home about any of the cards I got out of this. There's a Trout, that's nice. Uh, Mike Trout card five. Another 400 series card, is he a rookie? No, okay. Yeah. Another, uh, I, I always, like I said earlier, I hope to get cards that are 400 that are rookies because that increases the potential for value. Last pack. Probably the second I get done opening this, I'm going to hit post on my YouTube and uh, you will be seeing this today, the 26th. And uh, I will actually share this over to the folks at Dave and Adams. Give them a plug. Uh, I use Dave and Adams for almost all my purchases. This is, I, I don't get paid anything at all, by the way. Um, I just buy my boxes through them. Uh, they are a excellent distributor. I had some issues with them in the past and they have 
uh, at the very least, they've they've addressed them with responses. Um, when it comes to cards, if you're upset over something, you're kind of out of luck. But uh, there you go, 2023 Tops Heritage Hobby Box. I will open the second one later this evening. Um, but yeah, this is probably the first um, one that you're going to see of those. So there you go. Hope you enjoy.